Hey guys. Now that I've got my monitors working, I thought I'd take a look at this Western Digital Nut Center network drive. It's a 500 gigabyte drive with an Ethernet connection. You can attach a couple USB devices for external storage. And here's a power connector. Now what's been happening with this is that the drive was getting a little bit flaky where it would uh, become unavailable on the network and lately it's just uh, I won't even mount the drive at all so I'm gonna take a look inside it could be bad caps or might need a new hard drive this is proving to be as much of a pain to open up as those monitors were eventually I figured out the trick was to insert a small screwdriver here and here and pop the end open and then with a bit of force I was able to slide this up and then peel it off I have another layer to go through. I guess I'll be voiding my warranty, which is well expired anyways. I think I need to apply some pressure here, here, and here, and same on the other side, and then maybe this will pop open. And here's the insides. Here's the 500 gig drive, and I assume the controllers under here. The power supply is an external power pack. Uh, I guess I need to peel off of this tape and remove a couple screws and take a closer look. I removed the cover and the drive and clearly aren't any capacitors on here so nothing to check with that. Uh, what I'm going to do now is dig up a SATA drive that I know is good and pop it in here and connect it back up and see if it will mount that drive. And if it will, I'll try to initialize it and use it, and then uh, I think I'll run out and pick up a new 500 gig drive. Here's one of my four Dell PCs. It's an SC420 PowerEdge server. I bought a pair of these about five and a half years ago. At the time, they were selling them for about $300, which is really cheap. It was their entry-level server, and they were really pushing these hard. Now, according to Dell, you cannot use this as a workstation. What they really meant by that is the PCI Express slot had a plastic rib in it that would limit you to only a, an X4 card, I think. Well, it was quickly found out and word spread across the internet that all you had to do was cut out that rib and then you could put in a standard video card, which is what I did and I've been using quite happily for years now and same with the other one. I've had them both running basically 24 hours a day for over five years straight with no problems. I really like these computers because the CPU cooler uh, has a very large aluminum and copper tube uh, heatsink on it. And it does have a large low speed fan, but even if the fan were to fail, there's enough cooling in here that the PC can st continue operating for a while before overheating. At any rate, the reason I opened this up is I know that there's a spare drive in here. Power cord, get out of the way. I like the way these drives slide in that too. Pretty convenient. I've got another one of these as the core of my entertainment center. It's attached to the S video input on my TV. And I've got an S Dell SC440, which was the next generation over here as my web server. And finally, I got a new computer about six months ago that I just have not had the time to even set up yet. But as soon as I do, I'll be retiring this guy. Because I actually make a living as a programmer, primarily website programming these days. So although I have a degree in electrical engineering from the University of Illinois, I switched to computer programming uh, some time ago. Because, well, it just pays a lot better, I'm sad to say. Alright, I'm going to pop this drive in the nut center and see if it's recognized. I finished hooking up the known good drive. It's also a Western Digital, but only a 250 gig. I am going to leave the cover off while I try this out and uh, I'll hook it back up now and keep my fingers crossed. I've powered the drive up and here are the two LEDs on the front. The blue one is for power, so that's okay. The other one is a status indicator, and it's blinking. 
I'm not sure what that means, so I looked in the manual and all that it says is it indicates that there's a fault, but no information on what the fault might be. So I looked in the user's guide and they suggested running the diagnostics. Now, when I do that, all that it tells me is that there aren't any problems. <laughs> and I can access the drive all right. So I don't really know what the problems are. See, here it is, everything's fine, everything's passed. Only thing I can think is that it says that the capacity is 500, and I put a 250 in there. So maybe it's freaking out because half the drive has disappeared. <laughs> um, there's another tool here that they that you use to map the drive, to drive letters and to mount the volumes and so on. So here it is on my network. And when I click next, I see the four partitions. And uh, they're all mapped fine, and I can access them all, and everything seems to be okay. I did some Googling online to see if there were any tips about replacing the internal hard drive in any of these. And unfortunately, there isn't. Nor are there any utilities that come with this to reformat the drive. So I think the, their intent is that you would never be doing what I'm doing. The only tip I did see was to take the new drive, format it in another computer, and then put it inside this. So, what I'm going to do is schedule some backup jobs to run to this for the next couple weeks and see if they're working okay, and if they are, then I'll uh, drop a few bucks on a new 500 gig drive. Because what I do use this for is a nightly backup for all my PCs. What I've been using in the meantime is... Uh, one of these uh, USB external drives as a backup. I'd really like to get this big guy running again. So, uh, like I said, I'll work on a job for a couple weeks and I'll record a follow-up video and let you know how it goes.